thanks for having me here today. So my name is Helene Krug. Um, I'm Vice President of Financial Planning and Analysis. Um, just to give you some background about um, Jefferson, um, I work for Thomas Jefferson University and Jefferson Health. We're an 18 hospital health system that spans two states, Pennsylvania and New Jersey. We also have an academic medical institution. We're a full university. We have undergrad and graduate programs along with our Sydney Kimmel Medical College. Um, we recently just purchased in the beginning of November um, Health Partners Plan. So we are now not just a provider, but also a payer as well. Um, we are an $8.1 billion organization with 45 employees. I've been with the health system as a whole for 20 years, um, starting as a staff accountant and then moving my way up to um, recently, back in January, I took over the operating budget, which um, I used to run just capital, and now I run um, a $650 million capital management program, along with the operating budget and strategic forecasting as well. So I really wanted to start off today, you know, they asked me to come talk about the partnership at Jefferson um, between facilities and finance, because we are really, um, you know, joined at the hip, and it seems as though that's not the norm across all of the organizations. So I'm going to start off with a story, but before I get to that, how many people have had water infiltration in their buildings at some point during, you know, due to storms and stuff like that, right? So so have we. So we had um, major storm issues with three of our buildings. Um, every storm, there was always water, and you can only imagine what a nightmare that comes, right? So it's operational nightmares. You got to shut down rooms. You got to do cleanup from all the storms. So we finally invested about 6.2 million in window treatments throughout three of our buildings. And with that, um, you know, one of our project managers, after um, Hurricane Ida back in September, um, one of the project managers sent out an assessment. And he had, you know, sent the assessment of saying that, you know, good news, we had no water infiltration in our buildings due to, you know, these infrastructure changes that we have made. So, you know, just to kind of show the support that between finance and facilities, you know, this is an email that went out to all of leadership, which I then replied to that um, email. This is wonderful news. It's great to see and hear how these critical deferred maintenance requests have succeeded in their purpose. People love to speak to the new sexy new buildings and projects. But this shows how defer maintenance is just as critically important to the, to the success of Jefferson. A kudos to you, John, and your team. So with that, then there was, you know, my CFO then responded as well, saying, Helene, you couldn't have said it any better. And then from there, it was a cascading of emails from all of leadership and operations saying, this is great news. We really need to make sure that we are spending time with our infrastructure. And you know, even though we had seven to 10 inches of rain, we had no water infiltration in our buildings. So, you know, I run the capital management program. You know, it's a $650 million program, spans across the entire enterprise. And with that, capital cannot, a good capital program can't be run by just finance. It really needs a partnership between operations, facilities, is and is a big component as well, and finance. So I ask you, how do you view finance? Are they just there for approvals because they manage the money? Are they a roadblock to you? Or are they a trusted partner? There's actually a lot of similarities between finance roles and facility roles. I look at my role as a program manager, but I'm just overseeing the entire capital program versus a project manager is overseeing individual capital projects. I'm managing processes in order for the program for program outcomes. Project managers are managing processes for project outcomes. I'm coordinating teams and processes in order to get approvals and facility project managers are coordinating teams and processes to complete projects. So as you can see, they're on different levels, but they're very similar in their roles. And at Jefferson, I really like to think that we are and act as one. We're one team, 
We have one goal and we have one mission, and that is to improve lives. And I think that throughout this presentation, you will see the benefits of the partnership between finance and facilities and how by working as one with one mission that, you know, we really, it is better for the organization. And this quote from Helen Keller, I think, really says, you know, what I'm trying to get at here. That alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. So what does this partnership do? So there are a lot of things that facilities has taught me throughout the years. Project processes, timelines of projects, key milestones such as design versus DOH versus construction. When I first started as an AVP of capital management, I had no idea about anything on capital projects. I was there to put in processes, and I was there to oversee everything. But I have found that, you know, when I first started, we had huge capital overruns. Projects were always running over costs. They were always coming back and asking for money. We had huge carry forwards on projects. So projects not finishing in the timelines that were originally expected. And once you're carrying forward, then that takes away from dollars the following year of, for new projects or more allocations to defer maintenance. So by working with facilities and really learning and understanding what these processes were and what these timelines were, I was better able to adjust the capital management process and program in order to align better so it was better understood. And then how has finance really helped facilities? So, you know, I taught facilities the importance of really getting those invoices paid on time and also closing projects out on time. And again, that goes into, you know, the carry forward. The more money you're carrying forward from year to year on those projects, the more that you are not allowing for that money to be used for new projects. And I've also helped maneuver processes, you know, for quicker approvals. So by working through, we have a lot of different processes and our capital management program is pretty complex at Jefferson. So being able to work side by side with them when needed, I've been able to help maneuver certain projects quicker through processes and approvals. So what are some of the benefits of this partnership? We've been able to reduce the carry forward amounts on projects. Understanding a project timeline and understanding that design takes three to four months depending on how complex the project is. Then you have to go through regulations and get approvals. Then you're starting construction. Understanding that timeline better has helped me, one, be able to message that to operations. Because let me tell you, operations understand less about timelines than I did. They, you know, all budget everything. They'll budget a $35 million project all in one year. Well, that money doesn't get spent that manner. So why carry that forward when you can optimize the capital budget if you understand you're actually only going to spend about 500000 that first year? And then the real money doesn't get spent till the second year. So it's all about timelines, processes, understanding that. We've been able to improve cash flow schedules. So part of the problem was that we were doing budgets at high-level square footage estimates, which at the time I had no idea that that is really pie in the sky and it's just based off of high level. So you need to understand like what those cash flow, cash flow schedules are really truly going to be and what that timeline is in order to be able to properly budget a project. So by working with facilities and understand that, we have now go through a prioritization for projects and then we will release design fees first to truly understand what those timelines and cash flows and what the true scope of the project is. By being able to change these processes, we've been able to reduce our cost overruns on projects because now we have pro proper planning on these projects. We have been able to improve our cash flow schedules. We've been able to reduce our carry forward amounts on our projects. And at the end, we've been able to optimize our capital budget. And with that, that's a win-win for everybody because it's a win for facilities because they can get more money for new projects. It's a win for finance because we're not constantly following up on projects. And of course, it's a win-win for the organization as a whole. 
So really what I like to say is that I'm an advocate for facilities. I know how important facilities is and how important the defer maintenance program is to the organization. But in turn, facilities is also an advocate for me and the capital management processes. If we don't work together and you're constantly battling each other, that's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get the organization anywhere. And by able working together, we're able to really make our capital management process better as an organization. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what the partnership can do for you and can do for defer maintenance, because obviously that's the heart and soul of facilities and capital. So what do we know about deferred maintenance? It is literally the definition of deferred necessary maintenance for repairs and upgrades. It is the backbone to any capital program. It can have a major impact on occupant safety, asset performance, and risk of unexpected breakdowns, which AKA is money, 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 right? So how is this perceived by people? Deferred maintenance is perceived as just being costly, and it's really hard to get funding, because who wants to give a gift for a new HVAC unit, right? People philanthropy is normally for the crown jewels of you know, new buildings and new programs and, you know, citing new technology. Nobody wants to give, you know, donate money for you to update your facade of your building, even though you really need it, replacing HVAC units. But so how can we change the perspective and get more funding for deferred maintenance? We need to prove that deferred maintenance is really the salt and glue that keeps the organization together. Presentation is very important. And you have to know when to package projects a little bit differently. So how can finance help with this? Finance knows the audience. Finance deals with this audience all the time, and they're always presenting to the audience. So they know what the audience is looking for. Understand when you need to package as one project versus many. So for an example, you know, the way our deferred maintenance program works is, you know, we'll have a lot of little patches on projects. And these pictures are actually from a pro project for our Hamilton garage, where we had major structural damage. You can see that we had, you know, these orange things holding up the structure of the garage. And this was all funded through our deferred maintenance program. But by working with the head of deferred maintenance, I told them and said to them, look, this is, we need to look at this as one large project. And because of the dollar amount, for us, that's going to push it into strategic. But it's the right move to do. This turned out to be a $35 million project. That by packaging it together, doing the right presentation to leadership, we were able to get the project approved, other, other types of fun projects. So during budget time, our defer, head of defer maintenance, you know, usually puts together a package, and it's all based off of the FCI index. And, you know, it's a great KPI because, you know, obviously it tells you the health of your buildings and the infrastructure. But let's be honest, leadership has a tendency to glaze over when you start talking about KPI, when you start talking about the FCI index. So what are ways to really get leadership's attention? Who sits in leadership? It's usually operations, it's usually your CFO, the president, maybe your CEO, depending on how large your organization is. I always say that one, pictures help. They really tell a different story. And two, you have the effect of to operations. So if you keep having to shut down LRs, or if you keep losing research, or having to shut down your classrooms due to HVAC unit repairs, being able to package a project together to say, we need to replace the HVAC unit over all of the ORs, and it's going to cost $10 million. But you're going to stop losing money because every single time you shut down an OR, you're losing money. Every time you shut down a classroom or you're losing research, you're losing revenue. And to operations and to finance, no, it's all about the money. And at the end of the day, this graph of making sure they understand the true cost of deferred facility maintenance.
because if you have, you know, when they present that they need 40 million to get the buildings where they need to be for the FCI index, but we only fund 20 million. The following year, that 20 million has a cost increase and now costs 30 million. And you still need another 40 million for regular deferring to that year. So you now have gone from a cost of 30 million to 70 million in one year. And that kind of a graph is going to get their attention. And these are just all various different ways that I have worked with our facility folks to be able to better present to leadership. And in turn, it's really all about teamwork. It works better for you, it works better for me, and in the end, it works better for the organization. So really, I just want to leave you with finance folks really aren't all that bad. But when we're part of your team, we really can be your best advocate. That was an excellent presentation, and thank you so much. Thank you.